Good evening and welcome to Red Army TV here in the Red Army Radio studio. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I've got Johnny Bullock from Butter Breakdown. Johnny, good evening. Good evening. And Daz Beck, a massive Butter fan good from the Butter. Good evening. Yeah. Gents, loads to talk about. Um, not only, obviously, the Borough's summer, but it, us here at Red, Red Army, we've had a massive summer. So we've come from our old Boho Towers to hear our new Red Army studios. We, next door, we've got the television studio, which is nearly there. And obviously, the brand new radio station, which is going out all over the world. Um, you probably know this, Johnny, <laughs> but does you won't, this is the only fan run radio station in the world and not not in the country not in europe in the world wow so it's the first of many hopefully other fans uh, other fan groups will get involved and and, and start enjoy. anyway that, that's enough about us we're here to talk about the borough we've been away it's been a long old season obviously we're here uh live on facebook uh going out on uh teesside tv on the old uh freeview channels and things like that and obviously, going out audio on Ra uh, Red Army Radio, is that enough plugging, do you think I've done? Yeah, just enough, yeah. yeah. Just enough. I think you've covered everything there. <laughs> Certainly have. Uh, look, I want to take us right back. Um, it's been a summer, a funny summer for, if you're a Borough fan. And Daz, I want to start with you. Uh, I know when I sat on the fence uh, when Woody was, and I don't want to sort of like prolong it, but uh, I know when I sat on the fence is when Woody was sort of given the job. What was your thoughts on it? Yeah, I'm probably, like a lot of people, it wasn't my first choice. Uh, Jukanovic got linked and I was thinking, yeah, but then I thought he's going to want some money. He's going to want to buy some players. He's going to want to bring a lot of backroom staff. Um, and really, the only day I think I thought, actually, I, c I can get on board with Woody was, was when the backroom staff were announced that came with him and Robbie Keane and all his experience and the, yeah. the style of play and Leo's passion. And and then, you know, I saw the interviews that, that they all gave and Woody in particular. And that's the, I think that's the day that I sort of got on board and thought, I think I'll go with this. I think I'll yeah. give it a shot. And uh, w obviously, we've got no money. And, and you know, he's going to try and bring the kids through. And I just thought, he's probably the best option out there. Very, very Leeds-esque when he played there. But we'll leave it that because we'll come back to that. Johnny, um, obviously, you speak a lot about the Borough with your Borough Breakdown. And you do mm -hmm. that on uh, Red Army Radio and all over your social media platforms. Thousands yeah. of followers. Um, wh what was your thoughts? Because I'm a bit like Daz, to be fair. I mean, and I won't lie to you. You know, the, the, the people sat at home watching now, uh, I said it last last year on Red Army TV, I wanted someone to come in who was established. Better man, we just had Tony Pulis, who, who's who got five teams promoted out of the championship. Uh, Stoke with the highest scoring championship team. So I thought we needed somebody to come in who was going to be uh, established. Uh, and I didn't want to promote with him. And, I, and I've sort of, a bit like you, Daz, I've sort of gone with the train, if you like, you know, you know what I mean? What was your thoughts, Johnny, on it, though? Initially, I wanted Slavan Bilic. Um, that was before we even got linked. Um, I think it was like in the January or something I mentioned, Slav. Um, but then as Woodgate, it kind of, you could tell that Woodgate was going to get the job anyway from February onwards. Mm. Um, I think the whole Yukanovich thing was just a bit of smoke and mirrors. Um, but it's definitely Woodgate's job from, from February. But as Woodgate's got it now, you're kind of on, you're on, tri on, on the train a little bit now. And you want him to do well because he's a Borough lad. Yeah. Um, but initially it wasn't really my first choice. Um, it was Slav first, then Yukanovich, and then Woodgate. But... Look, if if he does well, it's it's great for the, the look, talent in the area, isn't it? I, I look, I love to see homegrown talent doing well, and and you, you know, Woody, he said in his initial press conference, didn't he, there'll be people out there who don't want to have the job. I don't think there's that many people who don't yeah. want to have the job. You know, uh, I just like to see Butter lads doing well. But I'm with you, Daz, because when the backroom staff was announced, I don't think, and bear in mind, I've been like you, I've been following the Borough a long time. Um, I don't think we've had. A more enthusiastic sideline as Robbie Keane, Leo Perkovic, obviously Woodgate and his passion, which we'll come on to a bit later on because we've got a little snippet of it. And obviously Danny Coyne, who, who for those who remember him, played a couple of games for the Borough, yeah. was always animated, wasn't he? Yeah. So it, it it's exciting, that sideline, does not it? We look what Leo did after the game uh, the other night and, and, and almost what George used to do uh, in going up to the south stand and he's you know pumping his chest and the fans absolutely love that don't mm. they and, and um, despite what he brings as a coach just his enthusiasm as alone is, yeah. is that's what the Borough fans are well, looking for well that's a great point and, and I was going to just say that obviously initially 
uh, Leo Perkovic came here, I think it was back in 2013, originally as a goalkeeping coach. He's now come back as a first-team coach after spending nearly three years as a manager-slash-head coach uh, of a Brazilian side. So, Johnny, he hasn't just been brought back here, uh, and don't get me wrong, it's a great marketing play. Yeah. You know, to, br- to bring Leo back, the fans loved him, he was a fan's favourite. But also, he brings a bit to the dressing room as well, doesn't he? It definitely does. Um, he brings more of the animation, he brings the, the squad together. Uh, he's, the, he's the piece in the puzzle between the players and the fans, um, definitely. I think if it was just Woodgate by himself with a, a couple of known um, coaches, um, it would have been very difficult for Woodgate to actually get on well get on with the fans because ideally he wasn't the first choice uh, but in terms of Leo yeah he's he's great to have around the club um, mm-hmm. I think he's going to be a good asset for the team as well um, he's definitely the cheerleader but um, in terms of his coaching ability we haven't really seen it too much yet but it'll be good and be fascinating to see what he could do especially on the training ground yeah I mean um Robbie Keane d- doesn't need no introduction, yeah. by the way, does he? I mean, Can still what, play. was it? <laughs> I tell you what, when, when we weren't uh, come transfer deadline day, and I, I was obviously sat in here with with Phil doing all the transfer stuff, I was thinking to myself, he still fit in some of the videos I watched him on some blogs. He was still ripping Aidan Flint apart, mm. and he was he was getting past Ayala quite easily. As I still think he's fit enough to play, if you want the truth. But look, he brings an abundance of experience, does doesn't he? Yeah. Not only from his national side as a coach as well. Yeah. Well, obviously he's played for some top teams, hasn't yes, he? Yes, he played abroad. He went. Was it Milan? He went to Inter Milan, Milan, yeah. Milan, Tottenham, yeah. Wolves, Coventry. Um, but it's his style of play. He's, he's little. He was a tricky player, wasn't he? It wasn't just a routine, you know, like a Mick Arthur type. That one of that one dimensional almost. He he, he had multi assets, didn't he? Um, where he would be keen, and uh, hopefully the things he can sort of teach Brit and Ashley Fletcher and Marvin Johnson and all, and all the forward players, Marcus Brown, will be little off-the-cuff things that just might make a difference, yeah. you know. Well, look, that, that brings us right up, and I just wanted to get your opinion on it, because obviously we haven't been on Teesside TV for a while, uh, and although we people do see us on social media and all the platforms like that, uh, I just wanted to put that little piece across to our first guests of the new season. But... It takes us right up to now. And look, look, we know about the Luton game. It was live on TV. I'm not going to, you know, go over it. Um, I'll just have a quick, a quick one from either or. Johnny, was it three points lost? Uh, yeah, definitely. We should have put the game to bed quite well, especially with the penalty. And then the third goal doesn't really happen. If, if Brit takes it, if Brit scores a penalty, that third goal doesn't happen. Did you like the style of play, Daz? The initial start of play, it was a shock to us all, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, I'd have took a draw beforehand. You go to a newly promoted team who hadn't been beaten at home all the previous season, you know, dominated League One. But, you know, 85th minute, you get a penalty to make it 4 2, and he misses, and I just knew we would equ- we would concede an equaliser that yeah. minute. So Would have killed the game. And, and to be fair to Luton, I mean, they have a, that, that long, long spell of not being beat at home. Mm. Um, and they didn't look like the new boys at the party, did they? Nah. They, they came out at it, and it's a tight ground there, isn't it? About yeah. 10, yeah. 10, 12,000 people yeah. crammed in, yeah. but it was noisy. Yeah. Um, and well, we could have got beat, couldn't we, at the end? Oh, I mean, Randolph ex- made that save. Exactly, and I don't think they're going to be the whipping boys this year, Luton, like a lot of people thought. Yeah. We've quickly just uh, scooted over that, fellas. Uh, we then went on to um, uh, remind me it was Brentford, Brentford. Brentford at home. Yeah. I hate to use cliches, but a game of two halves, wasn't it? Oh, completely, um, yeah. First 45, Johnny, in my opinion, and in my lifetime, it's the only one that matters, but <laughs> in my opinion, there was only one winner in the first half. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought we were brilliant first half. Um, we had the high press, we were closing down in the right areas, moving the ball well. Um, two goals probably wrongly disallowed, um, but if those two goals happen, it's a completely different second half as well. Um, but in the second half, it was a, it was a little bit different, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we'll come on the second half very shortly. And like I say, I just want to brush over these games because the, I don't want to go too far back. But I, like I say, I am conscious that, that we need to, to, to sort of first show this, the year with our guests in. We need to sort of like mm. get up to date. Um, but yeah, the, the two goals, uh, Daz, you'll have been there like I was. And I, I must admit... Uh, from where I sit in the ground, the first goal, when the when the line all obviously flagged up and and came on the old microphone to the ref because the ref gave it, didn't he? Yeah. Um, I just took it as gospel. I just thought, well, he must have done something. He's bundled it over. Yeah. But then when you look at the uh, replays, yeah, I haven't seen the replay, Matt. To be honest, and I, I was in the south stand, and initially I thought it'd been blown for a foul because Fletcher was, seemed to be right behind the defender. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking he's pushed him or something. 
Um, and I haven't seen it back. I've, se- I've seen I've seen the offside, the other one, but uh, I haven't I haven't seen it. So well, the offside, the offside, the, it was deemed that he'd handled the ball. I, I thought he pushed him just like yourself, but it, it was deemed he'd handled the ball. The second offside, look, it speaks for itself. I don't want to go over it. You are right, Johnny. It was two goals that I think we should have had because initially, from where I sit, I thought it was miles offside. Nobody in the stand cheered. Yeah. But when you look at the uh, the replay, it's offside. Right, guys, we're back. Red Army, Ra- Red Army TV in the Red Army Radio Studio. It's mad, and it? it's all, all tongue tied in here. But uh, look, we, we've we've heard what Woody had to say about Brit. Look, I'm a I'm a on the fence of um, you stick with him because hmm. I'm going to come to you, Johnny. Because I initially heard this on your podcast, hmm. and so I googled it and I thought, is this right? But I. I you're going to give us some stats now, and I think the I think the top one was Brit scored six oh, yeah. goals in the last nine games. Yeah, six in the last nine. I think it's twenty-five in the last sixty. I think the, I think it was twenty-five in the last forty-five, 45 and then something yeah, something eighty games. Or he something. scored something around sixteen goals. It's like every every ex- season he's been in the championship. Yeah, bar the one he got injured. In, bar the one he was, yeah, he was yeah. injured one for, for one about year. four months, mm. and that was the only one. Now them stats, Dad. I don't know. And, and he had like a run a, last year, didn't he? Where where he wasn't playing for several yeah, games, wasn't he? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, look, you watch him as well as I do, and I'm looking at him sometimes. And you're right, sometimes he's he's sort of uh, look. We had a, a player a long time ago for those that remember him called Hamilton Rickard, and he looked exactly the same when he. He, when he missed a ball, he, when he missed a, a shot or put a ball over the... He used to laugh and the fans used to go berserk. Well, you know, you, you know, you wanted to tear strips off him. I think Brit's the same, you know. Fans just think to themselves, he doesn't care. Mm. But looking at them stats, he is a top, Johnny. He is a top, top championship player, isn't he? Top striker, yeah. Um, if he gets a chance, he tends to put it away. Um, I think with Brit Sommelong, he's a great goal scorer, but not a fantastic footballer. Um, it's just in terms of his technical We've ability. We've got plenty of them it's, it's, at the club. It, uh, <laughs> it's not particularly great, but when he gets a chance, he tends to put it away. Um, and that's what you need in the championship. I think if we lost him, We'll be well. We'll be scraping the barrel, and we can rely on Fletcher to a degree. But Asomblong has got got the stats. He, he scores goals and yeah. fifteen million pound down before the drain. We, before <laughs> we move on, to, well, to, before we move on, fellas, to to look ahead. Obviously, b- big game coming at the weekend. But before we move on, I just want to speak about Fletcher because he's another one really does. I mean, he's, he's a young lad. He came for a big fee, didn't he? Seven was yeah. it seven million was, quid? Yeah, it was six and a half, wasn't it? I think yeah. So so we could have cashed in on him, couldn't we? Uh, and and look, let, let's give him his due. He could have also walked in the chairman's office and said, "By the way, I want I want to be off here. This is not what you you didn't sell me this dream. I want to be off." How much having him still here is helping the way that Woody, the way the gaffer wants to play his football? Well, the mates are named Brit, which helps, doesn't it? When you've got two yeah. two forward players who are mates off the pitch and and they do link up well. He, I think he's getting better. Um, he finished last season quite well, I thought. He scored more goals. His overall confidence again. His older players touch, and there was there was signs the other night actually a couple of times where everyone else was giving the ball away. Fletch actually wasn't, and and, and he was mm. he was holding it up and, and doing some nice layoffs to to the midfielders and Brit, and and we've paid over the odds for a lot of players, haven't we, over the years? And and, and I still include Savile in that, and you think seven million? Mm. What will we get back from him now? Two, and Brit, uh, sorry, Fletcher. At one point, you're thinking paid six and a half. At one point, the start of last season, you thought we wouldn't get one and a half million back for him if yeah. we sold him now. Yeah. But I think his his value is is going back up again all the time. Yeah. Um, and I think if if uh, if the transfer window was open now, you, you you could you could probably get what what back what you paid for him. But I wouldn't sell him. I think I think he's an asset, and I think yeah. his value will improve. And he's scoring goals, isn't he? Mm-hmm. You know, he's scoring goals from a in a in a new. Formation of football in a new style of football. Let's quickly come on to the formation. I know me and Johnny we spoke last week about it. You know the four three three, and and I'm going to put my hands up and, and do all sorts of things with my fingers like I do. With, you know when I'm talking about this formation. But look, use football is all about opinion, and that's why we love it here at Red Army because we, we want to hear all fans' opinions and your opinions. But in a four three three, Brits playing the top man. 
He's a top guy. A lot of people will say, oh, he's isolated, he's on his own. We're playing with an inverted striker. We're playing with wingers. All that, in my opinion, in my limited grassroots coaching, is tosh. Absolute tosh. Because if you're going to play 4-3-3, and I'm not going to go on a rant, Phil will be Phil and Courtney will be in the old control room there saying he's ranting. If you're going to play 4-3-3, the two wide men, which has been generally Marvin Johnson and Fletch, mm-hmm. when we're going forward, must come in narrow. They must come in narrow to help Brit. Otherwise, Brit would be isolated, wouldn't he? They've got to come in narrow going forward. So then you attack them with a three-pronged attack, like my fingers are shown there. As soon as the goalkeeper gets the ball, oh, or we right. lose possession, them wide men have to quick... Sorry, I've just said it myself, to, wide men. Come on. Them forwards have to then go and cut the lines off to try and get them to play the ball to the centre of the park so we can pinch the ball back in four or five seconds and on we go again. Mm-hmm. Does that sound right, fellas? Oh, or am yeah. I just hitting myself on the head? Yeah. That doesn't look what we're doing in the first four games of the season in the Championship. That doesn't look like to me, Johnny, how we're playing. Does it you? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, I agree with you on the 4 3 3. I think that's what we, that was what we spoke about as well. Um, the thing is, when with Fletcher um, and is a typical striker, they always want to come in central. Yeah, obviously. That's, it's yeah, where yeah, the goal striker is. Playing and when the and players very similar, well, I wouldn't say Fletcher's on the same level, but Rashford, yeah, Martial, he reminds um, me of Rashford. All, all come in. They always come in central. They try and. Behold that Martial scoring goals and so is Rashford scoring goals when they're in the centre of play. Um, but when Fletcher does come in, it exposes the fullback. And as Coulson was playing in previous previous games, he was going to push up the pitch. He would get exposed, and Clayton would go out wide, and there'd be a big gap on the pitch, and then Shotton would get exposed, and it's just a big domino effect. Um, hence why I would prefer we play with actual wingers rather than a, an inverted striker. Mm-hmm. But it's not the way uh, Woody's trying to play, is it? No, no. Do you, do you think? Do you think that's how they want to play, Daz? Or do you think, like we said before, they're just tinkering, they're, they're getting to know the best players for that formation. Look, we've seen Marcus Brown, didn't we, at Wigan started instead of Marvin Johnson? Yeah. And that was on the back of, and I was one of them saying, why isn't this guy starting? Yeah. He comes on, he's excellent. Yeah. I must admit, I thought he was going to get sent off at one point <laughs> against Wigan. But yeah. he, he doesn't start. He's obviously, Woody sees things in training. He's more of an impact player, isn't he? Yeah. He's more of an impact player. Yeah. But, do you think that's how they're trying to play, coming in narrow behind the Brit? Or you look at the first goal away to Luton, where that's what happened when it, you know, went out wide to John on the right, and he curled winning, and, and there was Fletcher in the centre of the goal. So I think he he does come in yeah. and, and, and form that. But as Johnny said, it, it leaves whoever's playing left back for us so exposed because our, our midfielders haven't got the pace to get over and help. Hayden mm. Coulson when they've got that right back bombing forward, you know they're going to be up against Wingy or Adam Clayton. Well. I could probably skip past either of them too. I mean, pace mm-hmm. is not any of them their assets, is it? So let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it will leave whoever plays at fullback exposed. Now, Coulson has a bit of pace about him. If you had to play George there on his own, facing facing some a fairly speedy right fullback, stroke right midfielders mm-hmm. that, that are in this league, um, it's a definitely uh, a, a gap that we have, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look, fellas, time's nearly upon us. However, what I will do is look forward to Millwall. Big game at the weekend coming up. I'm hoping it's six points in a week. I won't lie to you. Uh, just for confidence for more than anything else. And, you know, I want it, I want Woody to do well. Now, now now, now, I've stepped onto the train. I want it to go all the way. You know what I mean? I, but it's going to be a tougher test, Johnny, isn't it? They're, they're no Wigan. Mm. I mean, and I, I have got the stats from the Fulham game, which we'll come on to, which were atrocious. However, they've started the season well, Johnny, haven't yeah. they? Started very bright by, by last night. Um, yeah. They're very direct. It's going to be a difficult afternoon for... Um, for Danny Ayala and whoever plays centre half with him, maybe either Shotton or, or Dale Fry, but they have to, they're going to come to the Riverside with a point to prove. It, it definitely makes sense for me, even though I think they're going to probably dig in initially, try and frustrate us, and then catch us on the counter attack with the long ball. But um, they, yeah, they've got a good point to prove. I expect them to be about mid table, blow our half this yeah. year. D- so. Daz, do we need to stay? Obviously, with a high press, we need to keep our midfield, don't we? Higher uh, than the. Because w- what was happening against Wigan is. The deeper Clayton was getting, the deeper wing was getting. That we need to keep keep them high, don't we? I think at one point we will go to whether we start the game or, or whether we change it. I think we'll go to three centre backs on Saturday because they play long ball, don't they? They've got that yeah. Matt Smith, the ex QPR striker, amongst others, six foot odd, a handful. 
And it uh, looked when when he went to that with the sort of wing backs, yeah. it looked a bit more stable, it didn't did, it? It did, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, it did. Uh I think Dale Fry's probably key because Smith will win a lot of headers against Shotton. Um yeah. Shotton's probably only six foot, whereas Dale and, and Ayala are probably both six four, aren't they? And I yeah. think so I'm hoping we see Dale Fry back in the line. Well when we speak about footballers, Dale Fry is probably the footballer to fit into that formation. Mm. But if we want to play the ball off from the back, he is a footballer. Yeah. All good partnerships have a hard man and a footballer. Mowbray, Pallister, Pallister was the footballer, one he Mowbray was the hard man. Um, you know, that that's how good centre halves are and and I think that that's where we're missing that little bit of flair, if you like, mm. uh from Dale Fry at the back. Gents, we've got about a minute left. Predictions, Daz. Uh, Millwall, Saturday, big game. Hopefully big crowd. Two one, Borough. I think Borough gonna win two one. Two Scorers. Up. Um, I'm going to go for Fletch and Wingy. Nice one, Johnny. Because they're two 0 Middlesbrough. Two 0 You think we'll keep a clean sheet? I hope so. <laughs> well, look, I always sit on the fence to do a daft score, but yeah. I, do you know what I've been doing? I've always been putting the one in because I think we, we we're susceptible to let a goal in. Um, but I think with the Wigan game and and moving into like five at the back, like I know it's three at the back, but with wing backs, I think that um, I'm going to go for three 0 and on that note, fellas, uh, thank you very much for coming into Red Army TV here at Red Army Radio. It's been an absolute pleasure. Join us next week on Red Army TV. And for the butter, the only way is up, isn't it?